Welcome to today's Bible review. Yeah, today is um, June 30, and uh, interestingly, it's the last day of the month, and as well, the the last, um, yeah, the first half of the year, and from tomorrow we get into the second half of the year. So we thank God for His grace and His mercy upon us. Yeah, so I welcome everyone to today's um, review. We've um, we've gone, yeah, quite fast, and um, we are in the book of First Corinthians today. Uh, we've gone really fast. Matter of fact, we read um, First Corinthians chapters eight and nine today. Yeah, but today, because we've not, for the past two weeks, um, we've not touched the book of Romans. I'm just going to do a review on the book of Romans. And then by the next episode, I would focus on the book of Corinthians. So the book of Romans, as the name implies and suggests, was paused later. To the church in Rome at the time. This is the first epistle as in the way it is arranged in the scriptures. After the act of the apostles, then you get the book of Romans. And um, yeah, this is a, a very powerful scripture. It's very powerful because it embodies it embodies um, every truth. Very fundamental truth that we need to know as believers, understanding the very core reason why we are saved and how that can happen and then how to conduct our lives as people that have been saved. <clears throat> as we may all know, yeah, this is us later to the, to the Romans. To the, to the Roman Church, and as you know, historically the Church in Rome existed before the persecution. It was one of the early churches, and as a matter of fact, Paul desired to go visit the church, but he could not because of challenges he had at the time. But because he could not go. We have these very powerful scriptures in in the book of Romans. So it's it's a place that addressed Jews and Gentiles. Because the Roman church was comprised of the Jewish people and also those who were not Jews, the Gentiles, you know, how they are referred. So here you you would see Paul addressing very critical issues as to people relying on obedience to the law as what brings them salvation. You know, so it's it is very 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 critical, and it actually applies to today's um, church. We still have. The message of grace really has not permeated into the church as it is right now. The message of grace has been rejected by several people, just like how the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gift of speaking in tongues was opposed in early days. That is how the message of grace has not really been accepted. So if you want to learn and understand the purpose of grace, what grace means in the context of our faith and what that can obtain for us as children of God, the book of Romans is a place to lay hold on to. Okay, so yeah, let me just, just like um, an an overview sort of, the book of Romans it brings us to the point of justification by faith through grace, not by the works of the law. You know, Paul made what to say that we can conclude that it's only by grace through faith that we are saved, and not by any other means. 
And so I'm just going to, I will be touching those. I'll be touching those very critical um, passages in the in the in the course of this short review. So yeah, um, I'm excited to do this review once again because I know it would encourage some people who have not joined us to join us. And um, yeah, um, still time. Um, this will be by tomorrow. We're going to be entering our fifth month, and then we are close to rounding off the reading because. We hope to be rounding up this by August. So you can still join us anytime you wish to join us. There's no place you start from the Bible that is not rich to teach you everything that you need to know. So now chapter 3 begins to tell us the depravity of man. Yeah, I think basically when you look at chapter 1, quickly, when you look at chapter 1, you would see from, I think from, verse 24 you begin to see how that men were depraved because they rejected you know they rejected god and all that god commands us and then the bible said that they were given unto unto their own um delusion okay yeah so that's like they were given unto their own delusion because they rejected what god presents before us so that is sort of selling, saying to us that um, man naturally, by origin, by birth, you know, it's so strange that how it is, but that is the truth. By ordination, man is born with the same nature. So no one would, be, except for Jesus Christ and except for, for John, who was anointed from the belly, as the Bible tells in the book of Matthew, um, book of Luke chapter 1, Every man that is born has that limitation of being born into sin. So that man, that child, that person needs the intervention of the grace of God, which has been made available to us through the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross to come into union with Christ, to come into relationship with God, to become a child of God. So the chapter 3 here begins to let us understand the depravity of the natural man. He said there is none righteous, no not one. There is none who understands, there is none who seeks after God. That is the natural man, the very wiring of the natural man. The natural man is repulsive, he's disobedient, he's, he's not in alignment with Christ. So, but here the now there is an intervention. And why this is important is because when you now want to rely on your good works, you know, I have always emphasized so much on good works and good works are good. We do good works because we are saved. We don't do good works so that we can be saved. There's nothing we can do that can procure salvation for us. Nothing can purchase salvation for us by our own workings, by our own, whatever we think that that is what would buy that for us. Jesus has made that available to us. Okay, so this is why this is very important. I'm still going to touch, touch on that in the course of this very shortly. So now, when this has laid down to us, like how depraved, how ungodly the natural man is and is subject to destruction, we now see when you look at chapter 3, um, from verse 19, I will just push there. It says, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth will be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. That's for those that are resting on the law. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. That is in the sight of God. For the law is the knowledge of sin. Then verse 21 now says, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets. I don't know if you can get that. The law and the prophets refers to the old covenant, refers to the, the laws of Moses, the commandments. It says that there is now a salvation, that there is now righteousness that has been made available, and that that has been revealed has been witnessed by the law and the prophets. So it it authenticated. It is you know when you say well, something is authenticated, it has passed through the, the testing periods and has been proven to be legit. 
So the, the this righteousness that we're talking about has been tested and attested to by the law and the prophets. He said, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. Verse 23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is to let you know that all from birth have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So which is to say that you need this very um, sacrifice that Jesus has made, which is the difference, the difference maker in our history, in our faith, in our work with the Lord. This is the difference maker. This is what distinguishes us from others. All right. So you, you, the fact that you are born into a Christian home does not really automatically make you a child of God. There has to be a time of decision where you would decide by your own volition to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Okay, so now for all who have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that is directly from the experience of man through Adam. Okay, the, 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 the world we encountered, the, the man inherited from Adam, that fall that occurred in the garden. So no one can rest on his own good works to bring the person close to Jesus. But by Jesus Christ's, uh, by his, by Jesus Christ's redemption, by the sacrifice he has made, through his blood, the, the blood of propitiation, that is what, on this basis that we can come to Christ. So I think this is very important for us to really understand it. So going to church every Sunday, attending fellowships every Sunday, all of these things are good. They are very, very good. But there will be a time of decision where you have to deliberately, to deliberately decide and resolve within you that you need to, by faith, access peace that Jesus has made available to us, which is salvation. Okay, so that is important. If you want to understand the inheritance of man through Adam, which is the failure, you will need to look at verse chapter 5 of, um, the, of the book of Romans. Chapter 4 tells us about the our um, patriarch Abraham and how through faith he was able to lay hold the promise that was made. Yeah, so uh, that is an interesting place too. Chapter 5 begins to tell us that we have been justified by faith. And because we've been justified, we now have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So, every believer, I think why this is important to us is, you know, the accuser of the brother, which just happens to be Satan, would always come to probably, you know, to probe you and make you seem like you've not been saved. You know, salvation is not a feeling. Salvation is not a, it is an experience that is supernatural and has been confirmed by the Holy Ghost. That is, we are born through the Spirit. So, when the devil comes to begin to test and make you seem as if that has not that has that has not happened, yet yeah, Jesus, um, the Bible is it's letting us know that that we that have been justified by faith, have you exercised that faith? Have you exercised it? If you have exercised that faith to invite Jesus into your heart as your Lord and your Savior, says, therefore, having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You have peace with God through Jesus if you have been justified by faith. And that is by you believing in the sacrifice that Jesus has made, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have been justified. Therefore, you have peace with God. God is not mad with you. God is not, um, God does not hate you. God is not God is not at war with you. God is we have peace with God. He loves us. So this should this should encourage you. I don't know the situation that you're in right now, and it seems to you as though God is mad at you. God is not. Okay. God loves you. If you if we have read the book of John chapter 3, he says, For God so loved us. God so loved us. That he sent Jesus. So that sacrifice that Jesus made is what has brought us at peace. We are now at peace with God. We now have peace with him. So this should also to stand, stand strong on what you believe in. 
and resist the devil and he will flee. The devil has to flee from you. Okay? So this is what I mean. It's important here. When you read down in this chapter 5, you, go, you would say that through the disobedience of Adam, that everyone that was born by man was subject to death and condemnation. But then there was an intervention. There was an intervention. And that intervention is by Jesus Christ. Okay? It says, for by one man's offense, when you look at verse 15b, for by one man's offense, many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. I'm, rich, I'm using the, the New King James Version, so maybe that might make it look the way it's sounding. You can read this with a simpler version like the NLT. You can read it with the message translation. You can read it with NIV or the AMP, that's the amplified version. Any of these can help you to really comprehend what this is saying. Now, it's saying that it's seen by input, um, is it how do you put it? imputing, like, you know, in, to impute sin, all right? So through the offense that Adam committed in the garden, the, through the high treason that Adam committed, every man that was in that born in the nature of man died every man of every man that let me tell you anyone that is walking this earth right now that has not accessed the grace of jesus and come to this relationship is deemed dead before god because a sinful man has no relationship with god a sinful man and living in sin living in the nature of Adam is in the nature of death. That is called the nature of death. So the if any man has any man, whoever that is, it this is not class dependent. Whatever stage in life the person is, I'm sorry to break this news, but yes, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have no relationship with God. Remember that God told Adam, the day you shall eat of this fruit, you shall what? Die, okay? The day you shall eat of this fruit, you shall die. So that death is not a physical death. It is not, it is spiritual, spiritual death. So a sinful man, a man that has not accepted Jesus today as a Lord and Savior, is deemed dead, just like Adam died before God. Okay? So I think this is important for us. He says, so by the offense of one man, many died but because of the grace that abound in us through jesus okay this is where there is a restoration it says and the gift is not like that which which um, came through the one who sinned for the judgment which came through one offense resulted in condemnation but the free gift that came from many offenses resulted in justification for if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So if death reigned through one man, so now if you are in Christ, you have received the abundance of grace and the gift, mark the word, the gift of righteousness shall reign in this life through Jesus. Abundance of grace, gift of righteousness. That, what does that tell you? Righteousness is a gift. It's not what you what you work for or what you acquire by conduct i think this is hard maybe it's hard for some to take it in but righteousness is a gift the bible says in the book of first corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 it says that through god it says um, through jesus said so jesus has been made unto us i'm sorry jesus has been made unto us says um, righteousness wisdom sanctification so righteousness is a gift it's a gift that God has given us. It's a nature of God. For God, the Bible said that righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. So we receive the gift of righteousness through the grace that has been made available to us. And that is through the death of Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I think this is important. And what does that tell you? If you have this abundance of grace and this gift of righteousness, what are you entitled to? You are entitled to reign in this life. What does it mean to reign? To have dominion. Okay? To have dominion. The Bible says in the in the our ordination in creation, when in the book of Genesis, 
when God wanted to create a man in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. From there it says, let us make man in our own image and let them do what? Have dominion. To win in this life is to have dominion. Okay, so if you have the DNA of Jesus in you, you have what it takes to reign in this life, to reign over your circumstances, to reign over sickness, to reign over disease, to reign over failure, to reign over poverty, to reign over anything that has to do in this life, that has to do with this life, okay? That is what it means to reign. So you should not be suppressed by the powers of darkness. Some of you, when you sleep, you feel like you are attacked as there is a spirit that is chasing you. If you understand this truth, if you understand the revelation of this truth, what this tells you is that every power that is not of God is subject to you. You will reign over them. The Bible says that he that believes in me, he says, um, it's, how did they put it? It says, um, you shall trample upon serpents and scorpions and upon the powers of the enemy. What does that mean? Everything that the enemy thinks he thinks he has, you can tread them, trample upon them. It says to trample them under your feet, okay? You trample upon them. So you are to reign in this life. If you have Jesus, you have the potential, the capacity, the ability to reign. In the place where you are working, you have what it takes to reign. In your school as a student, you have what it takes to reign in your class, not as bossing around. What that means is to reign over every limitation, every non-limitation that the natural man is subject to. I think I'm dwelling so much in that. Chapter 6 is also a good place. It begins to tell us about, because that's not talking about the conduct, how we are to live our lives. And that is that our bodies should be an instrument of righteousness and not an instrument of unrighteousness. So that is very important. Chapter 8 now begins to unravel the, you know, the underlying purpose of why we are saved. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of spirit the spirits of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, made you free from the law of sin and death. You know, when you see this law of sin and death, I know you'll be thinking, oh, law of sin and death, what could that mean? Interestingly, do you know that the law of sin and death is referred to in the book of First chapter, um, Second Corinthians chapter 3? Um, yeah, chapter 3, there it refers to the old covenant as the law of death. So when it says that you have been you have been set free from the law of sin and death, do you know what that means? The old covenant, the laws of Moses, the commandments, and all of those. So which is what well, it is the law of sin and death. So if you are living in the law, in the old covenant, you are living under the law of sin and death. You are in bondage. You are in bondage. If you want to understand a burden that follows being under this old uh, covenant relationship, go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. You know, one thing you should understand in this is you do not, if you do not, you, know, you cannot be just a good keeper of the law. You have to be a perfect or the best keeper of it. Let me make my point. You cannot get 99 over 100 in keeping the law. If you get 99 over 100 in keeping the law, what does that mean? You have failed it all. So the law requires that you abide by every tenet, every principle, every doctrine, everything that it commands, 100 over 100, 100%. In the book of Deuteronomy, I think mean, time is not on my side. I want just to keep this as short as possible. It says, if you do not obey all, okay? If you do not obey all, mark the word all, okay? So what that means is you have to obey all of them. It says in verse 1, first of all, it says this, you know, now it shall come to pass if you did not obey, obey the voice of the Lord to observe carefully all his commandments, all his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations. All, you must obey all. But then if you do not obey all, there is punishment that comes with it. It's, it, it's terrible. So I would just want to let you know that relying on the law is keeping you in bondage. 
Okay, it keep it keep you in bondage. Now, these promises of Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight are the things we are entitled today to today because of what Jesus has done. We are entitled to the to the blessings because of what Jesus has done. So now it says, "For you have been set free from the law of sin and death." There is now no condemnation for you. I'm talking to whoever that feels condemned. I don't care what it is that you're feeling condemned about. I don't want to know the situation. I don't want to know. Maybe you can regard that as the worst sin of your life or the worst sin in life. There is no sin as thick that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse it. Okay? Every sin is subject to be cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus. So there is no condemnation for you. So I want you to speak to that voice that is condemning you, that voice that is telling you that you are not enough, that voice that is making you feel less of yourself, making you feel less of a human, less of whatever gender you are, you are male or female, less of what you have been naturally by God endowed with. So I want you to speak to that voice and let the voice know that there is therefore now no condemnation for you. Speak it yourself. There is therefore now no condemnation for me because I'm in Christ Jesus. Okay? You walk according to the Spirit and you don't walk according to the flesh. You're not subject to the law. You have been set free. The Bible said that he that the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. You are totally, completely, absolutely free. You are not bound by anything that the devil is throwing at you. Okay? Yeah, so I think this is very important for for us to know that is why it is good to read this Bible because there are several promises. I cannot just do them in this very short review that I'm doing. Okay, or like I used to say, this is just to whet our appetite to help us to also want to read. Okay, I may not, like, not I may not, I will not, I'm not able to touch everything. Okay, but when you read this, you will really appreciate everything that we have in Christ. When you go to verse 11, it says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus, he who raised Christ from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. He says, If that spirit dwells in you, how does the spirit dwell in you? When you accept Jesus, your Lord and Savior, that spirit dwells in you. And what will that spirit do? He says, The spirit will quicken your mortal body so sickness in you whatever that is troubling you by the power of the holy ghost that is resident in you that sickness can go every form of weakness i rebuke it in the name of jesus and i command it to go i'm just speaking to that sickness right now i command it to leave your body right now in the name of jesus okay so that is what you should understand so it's a good mind it's a good mind you have the spirit of god in you you are unstoppable you are not limited, okay? That spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. When, when, when you understand this truth, you will now begin to realize that you're not an ordinary person. You're not the ordinary person you see yourself to be. I usually you know, talk about Gideon, when Gideon was called to, to lead his people out of the hands of the Ninanites. Is it Ninanite they call them? Um, I'm not sure I got, I got the name correctly now. But yeah, but... When he was caught, when Gideon was caught, Gideon saw himself as one weak fellow that is from the descent that is weakest among his brethren. But the angel spoke to him and called him mighty man of valor. That is how you are seen in the spirit, but you are seeing yourself now as weak. The Holy Ghost is in you and can empower you. you remember what we read in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, for you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive what? Power. Dynamis. You shall receive power. So potentially you have that power in you, but in operation, operatively, it is not working because you have not understood this. That is why it is important for us to read the Bible, to get to know this truth, to get to know what we have, the, the advantage we have over life because we are in Christ Jesus. We are very peculiar people we are chosen by christ we are ordained unto greatness because of he that has begotten us with the power of god 
is at work within us. It has it is at work within you. So um I think I think you know um we should we should uh, you know um understand this truth and live in it. I tell you that this is where freedom comes. This is where liberation from everything that you think troubles you comes by understanding this truth and it's also very important in this day and time we are living in where there are different kinds of teachings that are flying around people you know teaching things that are anti-god and anti-bible when you lay hold onto this bible you will understand this very truth okay so yeah i think um i'm just going to stop i i i made it that i should stop at you know um, 30 minutes of this. I don't want to drag it along. So I encourage you to please join us in this Bible reading. I encourage you. I beg you in the name of Jesus to join us in this reading. It's going to help you. We are coming to the very sweet part of the Bible in this latest. This latest to the in these epistles are very powerful. They're going, they are going to open your eyes to diverse truths of the scriptures, and you wouldn't want to miss this. So I, I enjoin you to please come join us in this. And let us grow together in understanding what Christ has for us. I assure you, you're going to enjoy it. It's which ride. I've been blessed already by this. And I assure you are blessed as well. So join us. Um, lastly, I want to invite you from tomorrow, July 1st, um, 5 a.m. Nigerian time, Af West African time. If you are if you are in Nigeria, if you're in West Africa, um, 5 a.m. Um, for others in other regions, um, you know, I, I sh I'm sure you're able to, to know what time it's going to be. So I'm inviting you to come join us. We're going to be having moments of prayers in the mornings from tomorrow, 5 a.m. to the 7th of January. And the theme is times of refreshing. Come and be refreshed. The Bible said that remaineth rest. There remaineth rest for those that belong to God. So I don't, it, it, probably you have things that are, that are causing you to be very stressed. Yeah, okay. Um, come and receive <clears throat> this um, blessing of refreshment. Be refreshed by his presence. The Bible said that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Okay, it says, Come unto me, all you that labor under heaven laden, and what will happen? I will give you rest. And that rest is what we're supposed to walk in. So I'm inviting you to come join us. We're going to be meeting 5 a.m. every day. Um, the link, the links are already posted on all our social media platforms. You can just click on it, join us at the time. Let us pray together and encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit together. Okay? Yeah, so thank you and stay blessed. Bye.